Hey everybody, welcome back to Little Things or Big Things Education. We are jumping into Admin Relationship Building Week, and we're going to also give you a little bonus feature this week with uh, my paraeducator that is in my ESL group. We're going to bring Morgan on board. So we're going to kickstart you here on Tuesday with a connection activity like we always do. So uh, we're going to share a couple of ideas how to really build those relationships and um, and just build that connection deeper than you know just the I'm the teacher, you're the admin. So let's get at it. Let's do it. All right, so my big connection piece that I really want to do here, it's going to be very quick, probably just a couple minutes um, this week, but I wanted to talk about like how, how have I found success in building relationships with my admin or even with other teachers that I work with, um, like my para educator, for example. Um, and for me, that has come in the form of volunteering. Um, and I, I don't know if you've ever volunteered just like service projects, things like that, but you've probably had that same experience where when you give your time and you're giving to like a common purpose and you're there, like truly with like that act of love and act of service that like there's a natural connection that is created between you and whoever else is part of that project. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, what I've noticed is my, my admin's plates are always like overloaded and mm -hmm. they're, they're there before me when I get to school because they're working like bus duty, they're working the cafeteria, they're working, you know, places where they need to, to keep the student behavior. They're always there after me, whether they're doing the bus lines out of here or, and then they come back and they go to like the sporting events. Um, like I don't it's crazy to think how many hours like I've actually witnessed our admin doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, what I've noticed is the more I can volunteer to assist in some activity, some project, the better that relationship is with me and them. So um, I would, I just want to encourage the, the activity this way, the, the connection activity is to volunteer your time for an event, whether that is you say, Hey, like what game are you doing this week? Can I come help? Like, mm -hmm. you know, work the front door, um, sit in a certain section to help with student behavior, you know, keeping like sportsmanship, things like that, um, helping do cleanup or set up or chair tear down or whatever that looks like. Um, but being like, hey, you know, what game are you doing? And can I can I be a part of that? Um, bus duty obviously is a big one for us. We have required bus duty every four weeks. Mm. But if you can you know, show up even if it's just for a few moments here or there, or if you know they just took a call and you can see them and maybe I'm on my way to my class and it's not my week, but I, I can just get that feeling that there's too much going on all at once and I can stand in that location while they can go handle some, you know, fire they gotta go put out right. Like just, <laughs> just volunteering for five minutes, like that it's like I got your back kind of vibe and it builds that relation instantly. Um, maybe it's hanging out in the cafeteria, like I said, with cleaning up that can also help build relationships with your maintenance staff and stuff like Kenny on our building is amazing. And, uh, I've had the, the fortune of having his daughter in my class. So I have, I have a good relationship with him because of that. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, every time I see him in the hallways now, I'm like, what's up, Kenny, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, just, it's fun. And like being able to show up and, you know, pick up stuff from the, the ground. And not only am I role modeling for the students to pick stuff up and put it in the trash, but I know I'm helping in different ways there. Sure. Uh, join onto a committee. Like we've always got different things going on and they're looking for teacher input. And like, it's mm -hmm. just one more thing, right? To be on your plate. But if you've got the time and it's something you're passionate about, I, I've experienced that when I volunteer for those things, it helps build connections kind of universally there. Um, and then the last ones, which are more my, my favorite ones where I will go spend most of my time is things like homecoming showing up as like a chaperone or, you know, mm -hmm. security, you know, work on the front door or whatever, um, yeah. or, um, or doing some of the fundraising activities. Like I was the, the class advisor at, um, the first high school I was at out in Seattle and I love doing the fundraising stuff. Like we raised 10,000 bucks selling cookies and yeah. like it reduced the price of their senior breakfast and their prom to like 10 bucks a ticket or something. So mm -hmm. um, it was like, I love doing that stuff. And again, I built connections with teachers I would have never met with staff and admin I would have never met. Um, and it was just a really good way to put that all together. So that's my quick connection activity for you. Just volunteer some time and be, be a part of the event. So what you got, cool. Dave? 
Well, my que- I have some questions for you because like, that's all like really great advice about like both the like pointing out the number of opportunities where it can be like a short five minute thing, or like you you connected to that idea of like thinking about something that you're passionate about and investing your time there. And I use that word in- investing on purpose because like I've always thought of these things as like like literally as an investment. Like I'm gonna put these five minutes in, and it's gonna help me at this point further down the road. And, uh, working with admin. Um, but what I'm wondering for, for you is that it sounds like you've made a really strong effort to really like consistently and constantly think about ways that you can, can work with your admin in, in, in different ways. I'm wondering if that has made it so that you and your admin see each other as kind of in it together versus working at opposing ends. Cause I think a lot of times teachers think of the admin and the teachers as kind of being on different sides of like almost like some sort of internal um, strife in a building versus like being a team that's working together. So I'm wondering if that's helped with all the time that you spent. Right. No, I think that's a great point. Um, And it actually made me think about the episode uh, a week or so ago when we were talking about the idea of like how the first couple of years I taught, I was not very good at connecting with fellow teachers. Mm -hmm. But one thing I was still very good at was because I was passionate around the fundraising. I was passionate around the sports. I had a really good relationship with my principal and some of the other admin because I was going to all the sporting events. I was Mm -hmm. participating in this extracurricular activity. Uh, And so absolutely like in those spaces, it felt very much more, I'm in it with you. And like, we were like, in those moments, both the first few years I taught and now currently, Mm -hmm. I know that the admin I have really good relationships with are very student driven and student focused. um, And that's shown up because of the way we volunteer and and share our time together to make sure the kids are getting the best experience they can. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And because like the the other thing about like the whole passion idea, like I think every school I've taught at, there's been like a campus cleanup day or something like that where like people volunteer to to clean up. And so like that kind of like your comment about like helping pick up trash just like as like a common courtesy when you're in the hallway and kind of modeling that for students is big. But I just think of that. And then um, at Kenyon Park, we had talked about the fact that like Martin Luther King Jr.'s family talked about Martin Luther King Jr.'s celebration in January, that day that we all have off of school, like that his family really wanted that to be a day of service, not like just like, oh, cool, we don't have to do anything today um, to like really honor like his legacy. And so like we talked about that and then we helped the school with our admin create like all of these different service opportunities. And then like teachers kind of volunteered to participate in that as like, like, you know, hey, I'm gonna go help with this wetlands restoration, Um, you know, the business park down by the YMCA in Bothell, right? Like we went down there and did a bunch of wetlands restoration uh, for a couple of years and there were a bunch of different other options. that other teachers went to, but like being able to have that choice, but also being able to connect with people in your school that you might not have otherwise connected with. So not just admin, right? Like, yes, there were admin there, but there was also other teachers. There were parents who had thought it was a cool idea. There were students that I didn't have in class that I got to meet. So I think that whole volunteer idea is a really powerful one just in terms of like getting you to connect with more people in your school. So Right. Awesome. And you guys might have heard a ding because um, Morgan Roberts, my uh, ESL (laughs) para aid, awesome all around support teacher and like advocate for our students has just joined in. Uh, And so we'll we'll wrap up the connection activity right there just with some volunteer. And uh, we're super excited to get Morgan in here and uh, we're going to welcome her in just a second. All right, welcome back. We have got Morgan Roberts in the building with us, uh, a paraeducator with me in my ESL geometry classes, uh, and just does an amazing job of helping all of our ESL population across the entire school at Bowling Green High School here in Kentucky. Uh, excited to have her here, and thank you for showing up. I'm no, so I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. You're welcome. All right, Dave, what are you going to get us started? Yeah, first question, just starting off real nice and easy. Uh, I'm real interested in what motivated you to, to decide to work with the ESL population. Like, what was the what was the motivation for that? So I started out working in preschool last year. I worked in preschool for a year and a half. That was kind of my awakening of how diverse Bowling Green actually is. Um, I come from Union, Kentucky, so there wasn't as much diversity um, but as soon as I got started with them, I, I couldn't stop. Um, mm. I still keep in contact with a lot of the preschool parents. 
So that's kind of where it all started. I transitioned to high school, really not knowing what to expect, but I have fallen in love with it. Um, our students are awesome. I mean, they're absolutely amazing. They, they're crazy. <laughs> so crazy. They, they're, they're crazy. Um, but they're some of the sweetest kids if you actually dive down and get deep with them and get them to talk about their previous experiences, like coming to America and what that transition has been for them. So that's a good lead in. Like what, what are your strategies for making those connections? And I'm also wondering like how many languages do you speak and or is that not <laughs> um, even a part I only of speak English. Okay. So ESL, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Um you know, it's kind of a trial and error kind of thing. We have some of our Spanish students, Google Translate has been a blessing in disguise. Um, there are many times where we'll sit behind a computer screen and just talk back and forth. Um, some of the other strategies, you know, it's so much about just connections and relationships that these students know that I care about them. Um, especially being a first year teacher, they're like, who is this girl? Actually, I mean, I still get mistaken for a student half the time. So I just, you know, I've always taken that extra step to get to know their history, um, get to know more about their family, like what goes on at home, if they have a job, um, just things that they try to balance. We have a, we have a lot of Swahili students. Um, we have a translator there too, but at the end of the day, as an ESL teacher, it is our goal to try to get them to teach English or teach them English <laughs> brain. Try, try is sometimes accurate. <laughs> yeah, try, try. Yes. I mean, I'll give it my best effort. Um, but as long as they leave school that day, feeling that they had a connection with somebody and somebody valued them and they feel important, then I feel like I've done my job. Right. Uh, and I, I mean, I want to give you just a shout out because like I, <laughs> I get to like experience the way that you go above and beyond for these students on a daily basis. And you're not even in my classroom every day. Like this week has been the most chaotic I think we've had <laughs> here. And like, you'll, you'll come into the classroom, you'll say, Hey, what's up to the kids. You'll check on like two or three of them. You'll grab four or five of them to go test. You'll go take care of the test. You'll show up at a different classroom later in the day just to be like, Hey, how did it go? Like, I, I, I don't know, like the, the amount of, above and beyondness that you do is amazing. Um, and yeah. I know without a doubt that every single student in our class knows that you care about them. And like you and I have talked about this, even with some of our students that have dropped out throughout the school, the course of the year, like, like I know like Elvin, for example, mm -hmm. he, you cared about him. Yes. And he yeah. expressed that like he felt you were the only one that cared about him. So for me, one of the questions I, I continuously try to think about is like, how are you able to bridge so many different cultural gaps and experiences and life expectations and all those things so that you can connect on so many different levels with so many different types of people with so many different backgrounds? You know, that's a question that I continue to ask myself every single day. Um, there are times where we show up for home visits and the parents look at us like we're crazy. Um, but to be completely honest, they're not used to seeing a, a, a white teenage girl show up at their door. Um, and some of them are like, some of the parents just kind of stand there and stare at you. I'm like, hey, I'm so-and-so's teacher. And they're like, ah, they don't even speak English. They don't know what you're saying. I'm like, ah, great, to, good, good to meet you. Um, it's, it's more of just like cultural sensitivity, if anything. And that was my biggest thing about my biggest takeaway from preschool was you have to do things for people that deserve it. Um, they weren't born into what this culture is. Um, and to be honest, their cultures are so completely different. It blows my mind when you can get them to talk about it. Um, some of our students, like their parents, their dad, they have like six wives in Africa, which is absolutely crazy to think about, but that's normal there. Um, so it's more of just being present with them. And when they want to talk, I, I encourage the conversation. I'll ask questions. Um, I think a lot of times they these students have a story to tell and they're willing to tell it. But to people who listen and will like ask questions about it. 
Yeah. Uh, just really, it's just kind of being sensitive. You know, not everyone has the same experience. We've all grown up differently. I mean, even the three of us have had three completely different experiences to where we are today. Um, so I try to remember that, especially with some of the very challenging students. Um, going back to home visits, though, you go into these houses and it's absolutely crazy. I mean, there are like 12, 13 kids living in some of these houses and some of them are young and it's just babies crying and it's crazy. And it's stuff that it it helps me take a step back and be like, wow, they're they're not just misbehaving in school because they think it's fun. Like that's there is such an underlying reason why that behavior is the behavior they're presenting, whether it's for attention or they actually like just can't control themselves. Right. Well, I'm, I'm getting a lot of the, the obvious reasons why Tim thinks so highly of you, Morgan, and uh, <laughs> oh, you're focusing you. on, the, on the connection. So I'm going to try and throw Tim under the bus potentially here. I'm wondering how did Tim welcome you into like being a partner in his classroom? And like, <laughs> and what was like, what was the process of developing the connection for you two being able to work together productively? <laughs> So fun story, me and Co me and Tim coached um, volleyball at the high school together. So that's how we, we got to know each other was through coaching. And I always thought the world of Tim. So then when it came to my schedule this year, I was like, oh, I wasn't even supposed to be with you originally. You were. And we both were like, yeah, <laughs> like, yes. Um, so it was really helpful coming in already knowing Tim. Uh, we already had that personal connection, but He's been really great with taking my ideas and listening and just, I mean, if I give him an idea or I'm like, hey, let's try this. He's like, absolutely, let's drop what we're doing um, and let's try it. I mean, even today in sixth period, I came in to talk to one of his other students and their whole thing right now is why are we in high school? Why do we need a high school? <laughs> So as Tim's up on the board with his whole geometry and what we're learning, he just drops it. And he's like, all right, let's have a live talk. Like, let's break it down. Like, this is how much money you're going to make with a high school diploma. Like, this is how much you're not going to make. And I mean, granted, they sit there and they're just like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But those are the things that like they leave. And as soon as they're by themselves, they're like, wow, like that, that actually is true. Like, that is right. We, this is why we do this. Uh, so it, it was really nice coming into a, like a, especially a new school where I didn't know many people and having a familiar face. And then ironically, I got to teach with him. Right. So it's, a lot of the, it's a lot of fun to tackle the classroom together. And I think cool. and Dave and I have had that connection too, because we like one of our first interactions kind of professionally, I guess, with, with young people was with through coaching. And so mm -hmm. to be able to have that season under our belt where like, you and I both already knew that like students come first, like making mm -hmm. sure the young people are going to be successful and they feel built up. Um, and like being able to have you all already like participate in some of like the social emotional stuff we would do through volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I, yeah, I was pumped when they switched the teacher names on like, <laughs> before school and I, was, I mean, seriously, I, we walked in and we both were just like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was, uh, Dave, it was you can crazy. be jealous. We we made waffles on Friday a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Morgan's wow. like, hey, I've got a waffle maker downstairs. Can we do waffles? I was like, yeah, we can do waffles. Absolutely. So, and yeah. the amount of kids, though, at that point that had never had a waffle is mind-blowing. It's, it's like the small little things like that. I looked at one of our students, and I was like, yeah, I brought my waffle maker in today. And they're like, what is a waffle maker? And I was like, have you never had a waffle? <laughs> what is a waffle? I was like, no way. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like the little things that you never think of with like the cultural differences as big as the multiple wives like you talked about and then like just food stuff, right? Like that's such an easy way to connect too is mm -hmm. to talk about the foods that we love, so. Yes, yeah. yes. And it's something different than foo-foo and rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, one of the things I am interested to hear, because I, I mean, I, I see you again, like have wins all the time with these students. What, what has been one of your biggest wins that you feel like where like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I finally like cracked into like this connection piece or like I took a student from wanting to drop out to is going to graduate. Like I've seen you do that with students. Like what, what has been maybe one of your, your biggest or a couple of biggest wins and, and maybe you even like what's one of those ones that you're like this one still tugs at my heartstrings a bit because I couldn't quite get it yes um there's a a few moments come to my mind I mean you brought Elvin up which ironic I actually talked to Elvin today awesome uh, so it's like we're we're still in contact um he's living his best life working but there's a point where you kind of have to accept what's best for them and mm. let them let them do them um yeah. and that's that's where we hit with Elvin as much as I cared and as much as I wanted to push, it is a two way street. So I'm willing to give it my all, but if they're not willing to just give like the slightest little bit, there's only so much you can do. Um, I can't even think of an exact moment, to be honest. I just think my biggest takeaway from this year is just my relationships with the kids. I mean, seriously, like they're, we made a joke the other day about them being my kids, but I mean, I have done things this year. I have never imagined that I'd have to do like call a freaking social security and try to get that set up. Um, I've helped with job applications. I've done mock job interviews. Um, I mean, you everything that you could imagine. <laughs> I mean, everything you could imagine in even wilder than that I have done this year. Um, but I guess there's nothing I've loved more than those kids that have worked really hard on their resumes. Like they've, mm. they've come to me and been like, Hey, can you please help me with this resume? Can you help me with this job application? Can you help me prepare? Um, and there's been, there's been three students that have turned around and gotten the job and they're like, Oh my gosh, thank you, Miss Roberts. It's all because of you. <laughs> uh, which is not all because of me, but I equip them with the tools to help them be successful. And then they finish that part out. Um, I've connected with students that I didn't really expect to connect with, um, had to dive a little deeper, get a little creative. Um, but there's just, it's the little moments in the day where they're smiling and they're happy and they're leaving class and they feel successful and they feel like they can just keep going. Um, that's what keeps me motivated. I mean, I run myself high and dry and that's one of my biggest faults <laughs> is I'll push myself till I can't push myself anymore. But if that means that they're getting what they need, then so be it. I might have gray hair and wrinkles by the time I turn 40, but <laughs> we'll get there. We'll deal it's with it. Totally at that point. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that makes me think about Morgan is um, you, you've talked so much about the connection element and all of the great relationship building that you're doing with your kids. But I know a large part of the ESL job is like the, like the state standards for testing and whether or not they get to be in the program and all that stuff. How do you balance having that time that you care about, like the stuff that you want to do where you're building relationships with then also like, I'm imagining in some cases dragging a kid to a test that they really don't want to have to take. Ironically, we're doing some state testing this week. It's our ELL assessment. And normally when I walk into a room, they're all like, Miss Roberts, what's up? Like, what are you doing? We're so pumped you're in here. But today when I walked into six, they all like sunk in their chairs and they're like, <laughs> uh, who, who are you pulling? And I was like, I had done no one. Um, it's state testing is difficult. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is, it is very difficult. Um, we have we've ex we've asked a lot of our ESL students recently, especially we took the ACT two weeks ago um, and now we're we're assessing them and we still have other graduation requirements they have to meet. I always express to them that I understand how they feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still remember that sitting behind the ACT and literally dreading it. So it's just one point of life that things are going to happen in life that you don't want to happen and you don't expect to happen, but they're going to happen. And the best way to keep going is just to rock and roll with it. 
Um, now that I have done some like rewards recently, I'm like, hey, if you sit still and be quiet, I, I will get you like a Sprite or something. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Like I had, I had Biombe and sugar on yesterday out waiting to test and you know both of them don't know how to be quiet so i looked at both of them and i was like hey let's play a game of tic-tac-toe and i mean they were quiet for 10 minutes just playing tic-tac-toe i'm like oh my god you guys are awesome. what do you guys want do you guys want like a powerade a sprite <laughs> which side note we have a bunch of our soft drinks expired from volleyball season so they're all in our volleyball locker room. So I'm like, uh, hey, like, I have that easy accessibility. And I'm like, hey. So it's it's a reward system at this point. Um, try to keep them motivated. And, you know, Tim does a great job of trying to make them see the future outside the high school walls. Mm. And that's another thing we try to highlight when it does come to state testing and ACT that state testing only comes once a year. Like, mm. let's, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's knock it out of the park. And you guys won't have to do this for another year. Okay. Awesome. Sounds like you've got some strategies for that. I, I, I try, you know, we, you really have to get creative with some of them, but whatever works is what works. Well, the fact that you're not just falling back on the, you have to do this. So shut up and do it is, uh, <laughs> there, is you know, awesome. after explanation five as to why they have to do it. Sometimes <laughs> I just want to look at them and be like, shut up. You actually have to do this. <laughs> um, but at that point, they're just like, nah. at that point, they'll try to do something that makes you mad because mm -hmm. They know you're on edge. Yes, take a deep breath. Like just try to meet them where they're at and the ball will be rolling in the right direction. Mm. Uh, you, sometimes we'll finish with story time. And <clears throat> because you walked in today on like that massive switch from geometry to life lessons today, um, I, I finished out the day with it because they were in chaos mode, right? Like you were like, chaos you, mode. no, I'm not taking anybody. And yes, you probably should pay attention and we should know some geometry. So I put one last circle question on the board and I was like, okay, this is your legit exit slip. Like I need you to do this in order to leave my classroom today. And you know, like that eight group, like the group of eight of them that has not done anything all day because they're at their wits end, they're done, they've checked out that like it's everything I can do to keep them kind of from distracting everybody else, but almost engaged. And mm -hmm. so six of them, they, they figured it out, they knew what they were doing. And like when the bell rang, I was like, all right, I need those answers, write it on a piece of paper, type it in your phone, whatever, so you can show it to me on your way out the door. I let six kids out the door and the other eight had no idea what was going on and they lost their mind. It was like a swarm of hornets, just like yelling <laughs> and speaking in multiple languages and pointing and like talking to each other, guessing loudly, like half correct, <laughs> half wrong. So I'm like, nope, not yet. Nope, not yet. It took them six minutes before I had like all eight of them like converged on me at the door. And I was like, okay, as a group, what is your center? And they're like, it was four negative two. And I was like, yeah, what is your radius? 25, no, take the square root. They're like, oh, five. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> and that's why, especially this week in particular, it's just crazy all over the place. But these students are not used to being pulled and having to sit behind a computer screen and test. And that's what we've been doing, especially with our EL assessment. The more you get right, the longer it goes. Oh, that's so awesome. we've, had, we've had kids kids this week that are in there for like two hours just for one section. And there's four sections. So exactly. Yes, exactly. I could so see some kids. I could see me where, getting questions wrong on purpose just so I could get the hell out of there. <laughs> and that's, I mean, we don't encourage it, but <laughs> yeah. we have such different level of students. Like we have some that are like brand new first year in the United States. Then we have some that have been here since the junior high. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the ones that have been here longer know more. So they keep, they have to keep going. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we, we don't expect the kids ever to sit behind a computer screen. Um, so they are, they are, exceptionally on one this week <laughs> but you know testing testing's got to be done yeah. well, but i think we're i think we have 
a lot of the students have three out of the four done. So we're so close. We're so close. And that's been that's been my encouragement, especially today. I was like, you all are so close to being done. So close to being done. You did the craziest dance today when you told him this the last time you got a test. And he wasn't even part of your test group. <laughs> it's I've never had them actually like look away and like hide from me when I walk into a room. But they're all like, who's she going to pull? Who's, she's, who's she going to pull? They're speaking in Spanish. They're speaking in Swahili. I'm like, guys, chill. <laughs> it's okay. Like nothing's bad. Nothing bad's going to happen. Everyone has to take it at one point or another. Well, we appreciate you hanging out with us and, and yes. we Thank you for everything you're doing to help the students. And, and I, again, I just want to reiterate like how much you go above and beyond to create those student connections and how far that student connection allows them to even give a, an ounce of effort to create engagement and an opportunity to learn. And it makes my job easier. Um, <laughs> and I appreciate the ability to bounce back and forth and roll with my chaos. So, so thank you. Yes, and I, I feel the same exact way. Thank you for rocking and rolling with me this year. It's been a year. Woo. It's been a heck of a year, but you know, everything with COVID and I think we've, we've done well. We've done well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for being with us, Morgan. It's, uh, thank you. It's great to meet you. Work, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll see everybody back here for Thursday. We've got uh, print principal, right? Principal Fox. Assistant, is going to join Assistant, us principal, Fox. Assistant principal Fox is going to come join us. Super pumped to have that. And uh, we'll see you all back here on Thursday. See you guys on Thursday.